Your number one question since our top five natural threats video has been about the cooling power of volcanoes. Let's get right to it. In 1991, Pinatubo, a level six volcano eruption, cooled the planet by an entire degree for a year. That one degree cooled is more than the entire global warming that is said to have happened thus far. In 1883, Krakatoa blew, another level six eruption, and it created a 2.2 degree drop that took five years to recover. This demonstrates how different volcanic effects can be even within the same level eruption. Now then you can get really confused because the 1815 Tambora eruption was a level seven eruption, but it seems to fall somewhere between Pinatubo and Krakatoa in the temperature effects. But what does this really mean? Well, the thing about the 18 teens, they were some of the most horrifically cold on record, and that began before the Tambora blast of 1815. In addition to the 1809 undocumented eruption, which is part of this paper, there was a very powerful eruption of Lockheed in 1784, which was a strong stratospheric injection as well. So, the level 7 eruption of Tambora, it did that tinier drop, but on top of an already colder climate. And let's not forget that these figures are very generalized and superficial, without any consideration for solar forcing or other Earth cycles. So, speaking of that, let's look back to the mini ice age, 1400 to 1700. That large level seven blast in the mid 1200s, the largest on the chart, did have effects for decades, but that was definitely gone by the mini ice age in 1400. This is where we put volcanoes in their place next to the sun. Not only was the Maunder minimum very low, but it's not like the sun was doing much better before that. In fact, the mini ice age, remember, was 1400s to 1700, and that pretty much looks like the sun's doing. And one can only imagine if there had been major volcanic activity during the time of the Maunder period, or those previous low drops. In fact, speaking of the difference available within volcano levels, both the Big Spike and Tambora are both level 7, so there's a world of difference available there too. By the way, this lack of large spikes, which has actually dropped even lower in the last two decades, not shown on the chart, as 1991 Pinatubo was our last level 6 eruption, my cursor bottom right is where official climate science begins, and you can look at the solar data again and see that it also benefited from the largest spikes in solar activity in more than 3,000 years. I'd say that a grand minimum is more powerful than level 7 volcanic eruptions, but maybe not even two of the big ones put together. Obviously, a level 8 and the world we know it takes 100 steps back, but remember that we managed to get through the mini ice age without anything titanically volcanic. Now let's end this with a few minutes of a video from earlier this year on whether a level 7 is expected in the near future, and I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone. One of the most requested topics of discussion since we initially shared this most recent catalog and forelooking analysis of VEI-7 volcano threats has been for more than the somewhat intellectually unsatisfying and broadly qualitative description of the current risk of such an event on Earth. Here. I'd like to share some quantitative facts about these eruptions and show how recent history actually contrasts with the ultimate findings of this paper. First, they state that these big ones are happening about twice per millennium, about once every 500 years. But this requires going back in time thousands of years to when you see large gaps beginning to appear between events, where you begin to suspect that they might have missed one, or it happened under the ocean, etc. There is no question that the last 4,000 years or so of VEI-7 eruptions is well known, and they do indeed match the accepted catalogs here. So let's look back over just that period and see that the last few thousand years has something a bit different to tell us. Here we see no time greater than 380 years between such events, and if you consider that maybe the 30-year event was unexpectedly early and explained the longer one, indeed we appear to be ticking at a much faster clip of such eruptions lately, with one occurring about every 200 to 300 years. These century scales are approximate, may have been 196 or 305 years, but essentially when you look back through their data and the gaps get longer and longer, you have to know they're probably missing some, and so the numbers are skewed, 
such that they do not represent recent reality, which is indeed that we are creeping into that period where another one might be expected. So let's find some more numbers, shall we? The average VEI-7 release of material is about 75 to 100 cubic kilometers of material, of Earth. But when we look back over those eruptions we just mentioned, we can see that there is a deficit of late. The last three have been smaller than expected by about half, and certainly represent a deficit compared to the previous VEI-7 events on that list. By this measure, which could be considered as cubic kilometers deposited into the atmosphere and then later onto the ground across the planet, Earth is overdue for a deposition event of significant magnitude, like in the 80 to 100 range. Even while from a purely time perspective, we would not be overdue or too early for such an event, but right on time. So, what would be a good tiebreaker? How about caldera size? This can be considered ground deformation of the explosive event, and it is clear to see that the holes in the ground have been puny compared to the fairly recent past, where it is clear that the blasts were much, much larger. So if we may adopt a simple scale for expectation of volcanic events, you want to be in the early period where things are not expected to happen for some time off, on time means it could happen any time and there is really no way to know when. And of course, overdue means Earth should, by cycle and pattern, be ready to do something soon. Here we categorize the three quantitative measures that can be gleaned from the catalog. Time between eruptions, Earth deposited into the atmosphere, and caldera ground deformation from the explosion. We are dancing into that sweet spot in terms of timing. No doubt we are in the early part of it, but... Also, no doubt we are in it. But in terms of Earth getting out what she needs to get out, it's been a scant production for about the last thousand years. Earth is expected to be blasting much more material into the air with a much larger eruption, and it should be statistically expected to happen within about a hundred years, with no bias towards one side of that scale or the other. 